everybody. Welcome back to my modern homestead. For those of you who are new here, my name is Janet. Alyssa's behind the camera. Jake's working on schoolwork. And today, I'm finally going to get started on my meals in a jar. I don't know if they'll fit in the jar, but we're going to try. Now, I've been trying to do this since I actually started my YouTube channel. And I've just been busy with other things. I haven't stopped to actually do it. But I really want to try this to have some quick things to pull out. But before I actually do that, there's some things I didn't buy in the store, like dehydrated mushrooms, dehydrated celery, dehydrated broccoli, and dehydrated carrots. I need to do that first before I actually put the meals together, but I did buy a few things to help us put some of these meals together, such as dried parsley. I also have dried thyme. We have, this is just um, a small pasta that we're going to use in one of the recipes. Some barley. This is the pearl barley. And this is quick barley. That's all my store had. I don't know if they even make a regular. I don't use barley. So y'all tell me, is there such thing as a non-quick barley? Surely there is, like grits. But then I have some orzo, which is also a small pasta that looks like rice. And some Crisco. So the first thing I need to do, dry carrots, y'all. I know I showed y'all how to dry carrots. But where I put them, I don't know. Who loses dry dehydrated carrots? Me, I lose them. So anyway, before these and the broccoli can be done, they actually need to be blanched. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put on my mushrooms. And I only need, I think, how many stalks? Is that? Three stalks of celery. So I'm going to put those on and the mushrooms on, and then we'll start blanching these to get those started. Y'all ready? Let's go. <music> my best to keep these separated because once it's dehydrated I don't know what two stalks of celery looks like so I'm going to put the two stalks of celery on one side and the one stalk on the other side now these should really shrink down because celery is just so full of water these big pieces I tried to go through and cut up the smaller we cut them the quicker they will dehydrate. So now let me cut up the one stalk and we'll put it on this side. Okay, here is our one stalk. So let's put it here. Perfect. And we'll just close this up and no we won't. I want to go ahead and put my mushrooms on. I'm going to do the mushrooms in a similar way. Actually, I don't think I have to. I just know I need half in one recipe and half in another. <clears throat> the recipe calls for one cup of dehydrated mushrooms. I just don't think I want a whole cup of dehydrated mushrooms <laughs> in a recipe. If you've ever dehydrated mushrooms, you know oops, how much they shrink up. And if you had a whole cup, you'd have, oh my goodness, a lot of mushrooms so yes you're supposed to spread them out and not put them on the same rack <laughs> so I'll take some of these off and put them on a different rack okay and we have about half of the mushrooms on this one and half on this one now I will tell you I desperately need some more of these little plastic things but you guys I've just not been able to order anymore so I still am using these parchment papers 
that I just kind of may do with. I cut them out myself. They don't do as well because you don't have the airflow like you should. But you guys, if you can't get the right thing, you just do what you can do. Make do with what you've got. And that's what I've been doing. So let's just spread these out the rest of the way and turn the dehydrator back on. We're going to do about 135. And we're going to let this go while I get everything else ready. two stalks of um, carrots cut up. So we're going to blanch these. And in order to blanch them, you just drop them in boiling water for about three minutes. And once they're done boiling, you immediately take them up and drop them into cold water. And then we'll dry them a little bit and then pop them into the dehydrator. Now, I just remembered something as I was cutting these that I forgot the cheese. Yes, I'm going to dehydrate cheese today and it's going to have to go on one of the um, parchment paper rings that I've cut out. Now these are wrinkly because I've reused them. And also, you guys, if you can find carrots already diced up that are frozen, those are the easiest, best way to do these. These were definitely going to tell they're homemade because they're not all uniform in shape and size. But hey, it's a rustic soup. It'll be all right. So let's get these. Um, I'm not sure the water's boiling. The water's almost boiling, so we'll wait on that. But while we wait on that, I'm going to go ahead and put the cheese in the, de in the dehydrator.
stuff in the dehydrator. But I was wanting to tell you that I'm doing one jar or two jars on one recipe of a lot of different little recipes <clears throat> only because I want to try them first before I do a bulk batch. Now, if you find a recipe you really like and your family enjoys, go ahead and do your ingredients in bulk. That way, <clears throat> after a couple of days, you have all of your ingredients and you can easily um, mix up and jar up several meals, like 12 meals at a time. That way, you guys, if you live in an area where you lose power over the winter and you just want something warm and cozy and stick to your ribs, <clears throat> these would be great. Excuse me, I've got throats all clogged up this morning. So, all you will need is boiling water in your jar or your bag, whatever you choose to put this in. So, just keep that in mind as you're watching this. If you find something you really enjoy, do your ingredients in bulk, and then you can do a big bulk jarring day. You can't really call it canning. So we're just going to let this go until everything's dry. Remember, don't waste your waiting. We've already got everything cleaned up. So just as soon as you get done, go ahead and rinse that stuff or wash it out, whatever you need to do. That way you don't have to worry about it later. I'm just going to draw these and put them away. All right, y'all. Let's get these soups and meals into bags. For y'all, it's only been a few seconds, but for me, it's been several days. It's gotten crazy around here, and I have to keep turning my dehydrator on and off, on and off, to make sure these vegetables stay dehydrated well enough to go into the bags. They are actually still warm, so I'm not going to seal my bags yet. I'm just going to put everything together and kind of toss it around till these, ready, these are ready to be sealed up. But right now, let's put together the lentil soup. And y'all forgive me, we had to go out of town today. I've lost my glasses somewhere, so I'm squinting at y'all. Sorry if I squint at you. So the first thing we need is one and a half cup of lentils. And these are just some I bought at the store. No, I didn't dehydrate these on my own. I'm not crazy, y'all. I like to do a lot of my own stuff, but I've got some good sense too, somewhere up there. All right, so one cup, and what I'm going to do is put the things that I need that are dried into a vacuum seal bag. So there's one cup. And one and a half cups. All right. Then we're going to put our we're going to put our diced carrots in here. Now, if you remember when I was dehydrating our things, I put cheese on one of my racks. Don't do that, y'all. Not if you're going to put vegetables. My direction said 135 degrees was okay, but it was not. My cheese melted everywhere. Y'all don't want to do that. So I saved y'all the trouble. Let me get all these up, and we're just going to put them right in here with the lentils. All right, as you can see, we're not going to use the carrots over here that are in the oil. We don't want this in our bag. So there's our bag of lentils and carrots. Let's sit this tray off to the side and get it out of the way. Now we need three-fourths. That sounds like an awful lot. I don't think I'm going to use three-fourths. Let's do somewhere between a fourth and a half a cup of onions. And these are onions I dehydrated myself from an oversupply of onions I got from a co-op. Oh, that smells so good. Do y'all like the fried onions that y'all can get? These are like the French's fried onions. That's what they smell like. Put just a few more. My recipe, like I said, says half a cup, or excuse me, a three-fourths of a cup. I just don't think I want that many. All right, now we need two stalks of celery. And if you remember when we were drying the celery, I put two stalks on one side and one stalk on the other. So we're just going to take this side of celery and drop it down just like we did with the carrots, right into the bag. 
If you missed the first part of the video, I told you that I'm only doing one or two bags, but just one of most of these. I have um, two bags I'm going to do with one of the recipes, but I'm doing that so that I can actually taste these and see if there are any adjustments I want to make before I do a whole batch of them. Okay, so there we go. Celery, onions, carrots. Let's do our soup base. And have about, we're going to add eight cups of water. Two teaspoons of this makes one cup of broth. I'm going to do, I don't know, Sorry, that's my dishwasher, y'all. Two. Three. Let's do one more. Because I'm not getting this even. So, four. What's that four? What's that four? Four or five. <laughs> okay. So, four or five. But I, whoops. I always have this on hand. I even have it in my overstock pantry. So even if that's not right, it'll be okay. I can always season it again or add more to it, I should say. I'm not going to put salt in here because this base is salty. So let's go ahead and add pepper. I'm going to do about a half of a teaspoon. Ooh, that's strong. Hope it doesn't make me sneeze. You can do a little more if you like pepper. There's our pepper. And we're going to do two teaspoons of dehydrated garlic. This is some I minced up. So it got kind of dark. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my goodness. You guys, this is why you label your stuff. I smelled it. That's cauliflower. <laughs> I guess you could put cauliflower in if you wanted it. Let me go get my garlic. <laughs> get you a good whiff of that. Whew, that's garlic. That's one thing about cauliflower and garlic. You won't get those mixed up. One, I didn't say two, right? Yeah. And two. All right. Now we're going to do a half a teaspoon of thyme. This is not ground thyme. These are the actual leaves. Y'all, do y'all like thyme? I love it in my potato soup. Okay, next thing is a bay leaf. Y'all, if you don't have your own bay leaf tree, make sure to pick up some bay leaf from the store. They're in a little spice jar. Of course, bigger than that. But <clears throat> you can use one of the, those in here. I'm not going to do that. I have a bay leaf tree, a bay leaf tree out front. So when I'm ready for this soup, I'll have in my directions to get a bay leaf tree. So I'll know to do that. <clears throat> and the last thing we need is a, I didn't think this was all going to fit, but you know, I don't think I want that all together. I'm going to seal this up. I told you this is the first time y'all are doing it with me. I think what I'm going to do is Give this a little while, but then I'm going to seal this up and put this in my Ziploc bag. And when I have this sealed up, I will put a can of dry, not dry, diced tomatoes with it. I do have my own that I have canned, but I think this will just be easier. It's got a pop top. So we'll put it all together. That way, you all, if there's an emergency or if you want to go camping and have a meal, there it is, all right there together. All you have to do is add water. So let's move on to our next, oh, let me show you this. I did label it, lentil soup, and then I have it, uh, my directions, combined with eight cups of water and one bay leaf. Simmer till lentils are tender. Serves eight. Easy, so easy, guys. I hope these turn out really well. <clears throat> All right, y'all, let's do cheddar potato soup. To start this, we need three cups of potato flakes. That's just simply dehydrated mashed potatoes.
Okay. That's messy, but it's okay. It'll clean up. Let's add four tablespoons of the chicken seasoning again. Let's do one fourth cup of dehydrated onion. We're going to add in the one stalk of the dehydrated celery. chives. I'm going to save that for the end because I don't have any. I just put it on my bag to remind me to add it at the end. But if we don't have it, it's not the end of the world. Let's do thyme. One teaspoon. Again, these are the dried leaves, not the ground. I love thyme in my potato soup. Right. One half teaspoon of pepper. Again, if you like more, feel free to add more. All right, we need one fourth cup of powdered milk. No smell. One fourth cup of sour cream powder. You guys, I bought these products off the of Amazon if you're wondering where to find them. And next we have freeze dried cheddar cheese. Guess what? Oh, how many freeze dried cheddar cheese? Have you seen how expensive that stuff is? But I do have cheddar cheese powder. I don't know how much to put in here. I've never used it. <clears throat> it says one tablespoon is a serving. <laughs> um, I guess I'm going to use about, I'll start with a fourth of a cup because I really don't know how this stuff works. If you use these products, feel free to let me know because I am new to these. I've been buying them for a while just to have, but it's time to use them. So I'm just adding one fourth of a cup. I don't know, we might want a little bit more. I'm a cheesy kind of person. So there's another probably eighth of a cup. That may be enough, it may not. Remember this is what we're doing this for, trying it out to see what we like and what we don't. So, ta-da! One last thing I didn't tell you was bacon bits. I have added five servings to my bag, and this is an old cheap thing. I couldn't find my real bacon bits. Who knows where they are in this crazy house. So about that much in my palm. And then we're going to add what happens when you're in a hurry. I was supposed to be adding all of this to my freeze dry bag. Alyssa just said that and it didn't dawn on me what she was saying. I didn't understand. This was supposed to go into here so that I could seal it up. We're just going to leave it. We'll eat this one first. Bye bye vacuum seal bag. Hold on just a minute. I guess I'm just going to add these. I really don't want to do that. That's why I was going to put it in the vacuum seal bag. I could staple it, but then you'd have a hole in it. Just work with the craziness, guys. There's our potato soup and our directions. Now let's work on cheddar broccoli soup, or broccoli cheddar soup, whichever way you'd like to say it. We're adding our broccoli. Remember, we did three crowns and dehydrated it. All right, for this, we're going to use the beef broth basin seasoning. We need three tablespoons. One, oh, two, and three. Okay, y'all, so we're being super creative. Don't use the beef in the broccoli. You use the chicken. <sighs> I was looking at the wrong recipe. All right. Let's do some onions again. One half cup. A 
it looks like way more onions than what I want. So I'm just going to use half of them. I just used one fourth of a cup. So yay, we're having a party spilling onions everywhere. Let's do, oh, we get to use our diced potatoes. Let me go get them. And we're going to use one fourth cup of dehydrated diced potatoes. Why diced potatoes and broccoli soup? I don't know. I was just looking at a bunch of different recipes and I combined them and I just left it. Why not? Now this is cheddar broccoli after all. I don't have dehydrated, G, de 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 dehydrated cheese. So we're going to use this. I used a half of a cup, maybe a little bit more. That sounds good to me. I don't know how much that is. Whatever looks good to you. <laughs> Again, if you're used to using these products, I hope I'm not overdoing it. Y'all can let me know below if y'all catch it before I eat it. All right, this is a creamy soup, so let's put together our part that makes it creamy. This is a cream dream team. Really, I don't know. Let's do a third of a cup of the sour cream. All right, a third of a cup of the dried sour cream powder. I don't know exactly how much that was. I just eyeballed it. I tried to get close. All right, a third of a cup of the dried milk powder. All right, a third of a cup. A third of a cup of flour. Done. That soup is put together. So again, I'm going to leave this open for just a little bit, and I have a bag that tells what it is, the assembly directions or the cooking directions. This cream part won't go in until the end of the soup after it's simmered, and that will thicken and make the soup creamy. Okay, y'all, let's do some beef and lentil soup with pasta. You can add all lentils, or you can do half lentils and half split peas. I could not find split peas, so we're doing all lentils. Okay, just to be clear, guys, that was a total of one half cup. So one fourth cup of lentils, one fourth cup of split peas, or one half cup of lentils. I'll show this one. Okay, this time we really are supposed to use the beef broth and seasoning. We use three tablespoons. All right, and I almost messed up again. Did y'all see me putting that in that Ziploc bag? All right, now we need four, one fourth cup of pearl barley. And you guys, this is the quick pearl barley. I'm going to put it in its own little separate bag so we can add it at the end because I don't want it to get too done because I was looking at the time to cook and it was 10 minutes. One fourth cup of pearl barley. Now we're going to do two and a half tablespoons of the dried onions. We're going to use one fourth of a teaspoon of dried turmeric. I like turmeric, some people don't. I love it. Okay. Then we also need one and a half teaspoons of dried Italian seasoning. Guess who didn't get any? I need to add that to my bag. Okay, I wrote to add the Italian seasoning and the bay leaf because this recipe does call for bay leaf, but I don't want to put that in there and we'll keep it growing nice and pretty on the tree. How much Italian seasoning? Uh, one and a half teaspoons, I'd already said that. All right. Then we need one fourth cup of uncooked brown rice. All right. I'm not using this rice. This rice is super old. I mean like years old. <laughs> and it's starting to smell rancid. So if you're going to use brown rice 
or white rice, check it first. But if you're going to use brown rice, don't seal this up and keep it for an extended period of time because the brown rice goes bad quickly, really fast. Goes bad quickly, really fast. That, that makes lots of sense. <laughs> it will go rancid really quickly. So use fresh white rice in this recipe. Unless you're using it soon, and then you can use the brown rice. All right, we have our one fourth cup of white rice because we don't know how soon we're going to be using that and we don't want the brown rice to go rancid. Okay. Okay, with this, I'm not going to put it in the bag, but we're going to put a can of um, Boston Butt, any kind of beef that you have. We're also going to use a can of diced tomatoes and a can of tomato paste. And the last thing we're going to add is um, one half cup of dried pasta. And this is going to go in its own separate bag also. I don't know what I did with it, but I'll grab another. Because you add it at the end. Because you know pasta cooks quickly, and this actually simmers for about 45 minutes. That would not be pretty. All right, and if you can tell, those are really small pieces of pasta. You can use orzo. Isn't that right? Is that how you pronounce it? It looks like the rice. But Alyssa said she had never seen these before because I've never cooked with them before. But you want to use any type of small pasta that you like. So here we go. Here's our beef and lentil soup. I'm just going to put the jars down in here. I do have some larger Ziploc bags if we need it. We'll grab those. But for now, we're just going to try to fit it all in this one gallon size. I think once we dry or seal this, it'll be perfect. Just drop it right down in there. All right, we have one cup of broken up pasta. It's just spaghetti pasta. And I went ahead and measured out three cups of instant white rice. This is um, just parboiled if you find it in the store. So let's add the noodles to the rice. We're putting this in a separate bag. Okay, now this recipe, it calls for one fourth of a cup of shortening. And to do this, that was already measured out for me. I just eyeballed it right there on the side. We're just going to wrap it in a piece of plastic. And it's going to get its own separate bag. Just make sure you wrap it up really well. Into its own little bag. Okay, let's put the remaining ingredients in a bag. We're going to use one third of a cup of onions that are dry. Then we're going to use four tablespoons of beef broth seasoning, or the base, whatever you call this stuff. Just know if I say beef broth, this is what I'm talking about. One, two, three, four, right? We need one third of a cup of Parsley flakes. This is one pound of mushrooms that have been dried. have the three cups of rice and the one cup of broken spaghetti noodles and our flavoring. And what we're going to do, just like the others, we're going, what did I do? I thought I blew a hole in the bag. Okay, we're just going to put these all in one big Ziploc bag. I'm actually going to use these this week. Don't you tell what? The door open. Okay. You can actually put these in a vacuum seal bag, but because I know I'm going to use them soon, I'm just leaving them just like this. It's all ready to go. And all I need to do is write the directions on it. And now we're going to put together a packet for tortillas. We're going to use two cups of all-purpose flour. And I need one teaspoon of salt. 
one fourth teaspoon of baking soda, not baking soda, baking powder. Okay, again, one fourth cup of butter flavored shortening. I don't guess it has to be butter flavored, you could use whichever. Okay, we're just going to put the shortening down in here with this bag and we'll seal this bag up. It's just another of the beefy rice and mushroom but we have our broccoli cheddar soup beef rice and mushroom beef and lentils uh, cheddar potato soup and just plain lentil soup and we also have the beginnings of our seventh meal that is our tortilla mix so you guys that was so much fun I know it was a little longer than usual but I thank you for sticking with me and watching. I thank you for coming to visit. And as always, I love it when you come and spend a few minutes with me. So until we meet again, may you be blessed and you be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. Love you guys. <laughs> just what in the world? I could not find split peas, so we're doing all lentils.